please like and subscribe. My name is Jennifer and I make Basilic kits as well as embroidery and I give you tips and tricks all along the way. In this video we will be putting on the rest of the bottom of the wall hanging and we'll be uh, putting together the happy, there's like a happy Easter banner that goes on top of it. I will show you how to do that so please keep watching. All right, so we are going to be appliquing these two grass pieces together. And let me tell you, it took forever to cut them out <laughs> because of all the little ridges that you have to cut out. So just these two pieces alone took me quite a while. Like I can't even, I don't even remember how long it took me, but I know it took me a couple of hours to cut them out. Um, so they were pretty tedious, but anyway, so we're going to... Um, applique these two together and this is the applique stitch that I'm showing you right now and you can pretty much start in whatever spot you like since we're going to be appliquing all the way around and I'm just showing you the beginnings of it and um, and then I'll do the rest off camera because the way that my camera set up it's hard for me to kind of see what I'm doing so um, I'm trying to make sure that the um, it's not out of focus a lot and um, adjusting as I go so all right I'm gonna skip ahead and show you what it looks like after all right so I started appliquing it on the very bottom and I'll kind of show you where I put the stitches and how I'm applicating the top so I'm not like applicating it fully like I'm putting a bunch of stitches in but it's not as consistent as if I was putting the two felt pieces together earlier so this is what I'm doing. So I'm just kind of sewing. Whoops, hold on. There we go. Happens so much. There, there it happens again. <laughs> That's why you gotta go slow, because one time my thread got stuck on a bead and I pulled it too hard and I yanked the bead out and I had to go back and fix it. So um make sure you're going slow when you're doing this, because there's a lot of things that your thread can get caught on. So this is how I'm applica applicating the top of the grass. So I'm literally going in between each individual blade and putting a stitch in. And I'm making sure that I'm not going through to the back so that you don't see all the thread in the back because there's so many layers underneath that I could easily hide the stitch. So this is what I'm doing to applique these, these pieces together. All right, and then I'm gonna finish it off camera. All right, now that the grass is finished, we're gonna be working on these cute little purple flowers. And I'm sure there's a name for them, but I don't know. <laughs> so we're gonna just applique these two felt pieces together with one strand of light periwinkle thread. And we are not stuffing these. So we're just gonna do a quick applique stitch here. I'll show you how to start. Just pick an area and go from there because we're doing it all the way around. Here's a few starting stitches. And sorry, my camera keeps going out of focus. It wants to focus on my hand and not the <laughs> project that I'm working on. So once the flower is finished, we're going to be um, appliquing it onto the wall hanging with just beads and sequins. Okay, so um, grab your beading needle and two strands of the periwinkle and blue sequins and clear beads. And each flower has three of them. And we are going directly through to the back of the wall hanging. And then that's how we're applicating them. So they kind of have this cute little 3D effect going. You're going to do this with the remaining other two flowers that are just like this flower. There's another flower of this color and then there is a third flower that's kind of more of a purpley color. So those are the same as these two and then there's two more roses on the bottom. Um, I don't show you the roses because I just kind of did them off camera real quick. Um, if you go to my other tutorial um, I will link it to the video and I'll also um, do roses in there and I show you how I do them. So if you have not seen that, I will link it up at the top in the cards. So um, now we're gonna do the cording, okay? Excuse my messy desk under my desk. Um, 
Got a couple of shoes down there. And um, this cording is for the banner that says Happy Easter. And it requires two um, threads of white and it's the full length, so 36 inches. So we're going to make cording. And then once you, um, once you do it tight enough, um, you grab a pen. See how it's twirling on its own? So that's what it does when you twirl, when you kind of, um, the tighter you twirl, the, the nicer the cording you're gonna get. So um, you're basically just waiting until the pen stops spinning. Once the pen stops spinning, you know that the cord is as tight as it's gonna get. There we go. So once the pen stops, um, you don't need to hold on to it anymore. It'll stay corded. And there it is, it's kind of a close up there of the cording. And then you just take the pen off the end and make sure you knot both ends. Here's another close up on the cording. We're also going to be doing cording um, in the next tutorial. So um, it's for the back to hang the wall hanging with, and that's with six strands instead of two. And I decided to use white for that also. So same idea. I just want to give you a close up. So there's one side knotted, and I will knot the other side later on. So that's my cording that we'll be using right now. All right, grab your periwinkle felt with all of the letterings that spell Happy Easter, and we're going to be doing a back stitch. So that's what I'm showing you there is the back stitch. And um, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can do small back stitches, big back stitches, wh whatever you want. I'm just going by what the picture looks like. This part took a while um, because we're not just appliquing the front and the backs together. We're actually adding like a mini loop on the top of each individual letter. And I will show you how I ended up doing it. The instructions in the kit were a little tedious. Um, it said to create tiny loops that were a quarter inch. And I'm thinking, how the heck do I do that? Like, my fingers are so not tiny. <laughs> so uh, what I ended up doing was, because um, it requires two strands of white. So I grabbed two strands of white. Okay, so literally that's what they want. They want like a quarter inch um, you know, not on each end. So this is what I did. Um, I just used the, um, I just put the two strands on a needle and then knotted the end and then used my finger as kind of a guide to make another knot and kind of guesstimate how, how long. So each, each one of these that I did, it's not the exact, they're not exact. So yeah, so this took a while. Um, and then I ended up kind of, sorry for the blurriness, the camera wanted to focus on my finger there. Um, so I just kind of played with it a little bit and maneuvered it a little bit. And if you have a hard time following, you know, um, you know, rewind and watch it again, because I ended up, I ended up doing this for a few letters before I figured out the best way to do that. So here's all of my letters put together with the little tiny loops on top. You see those? Yeah. Yeah. And you notice that they're not all the same size. Okay, so the cord that we made earlier, I um, tacked it on the very in the very middle of the wall hanging, and I left I left the sides hanging so that I can space out the letters. Okay, and so the little loops that I made, I put tack stitches on each individual loop. Alright, and then once I did that, I took the pins out and I took the ends of the banner like cording and I tacked it on the back. So I did it on the left side here, but not on the right side. So that's what we have so far. Check out my next video, which is the very last tutorial of this Easter wall hanging. Make sure to look out for that. And if you haven't yet, please hit that like button if you like this video and hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed yet. And if you'd like to see more videos, check out the cards here for more tutorials and in the description box below for any materials that I use, as well as my Etsy shop and my GoFundMe link for my small business startup. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.